thank you all very much for this opportunity to be with you. I'm sure that I can speak for all of the congressional delegation that we enjoy your group. We enjoy other groups from other cities that come here because uh, you folks are in the middle of the, the problems and the decision making in town. And when you uh, prioritize issues, when you uh, uh, say what's more important than something else, and we can follow your recommendations, it makes our job a heck of a lot easier here. And we can spend our time getting something done as opposed to uh, doing research back home to find out which is more important, this project or that project, or this issue or that issue. So thank you very much for taking time to do it. And I've been reminded that this is the 30th time that you have come uh, to Washington, D.C. And you need to be congratulated for keeping that up because I think the consistency of it helps uh, bring attention to uh, the work you do back home and uh, keeps uh, uh, the attention of those of us here in Washington, D.C. If I could visit with you just about one issue, and that would be health care reform. Uh, I would like to do that, but I'd be glad, happy to answer questions on any subject that you might want to ask me. Uh, as a former chairman and now ranking member of the Senate Finance Committee, uh, I'm uh, involved in one of the committees that is working on health care reform, as Senator Harkin is involved in another committee, uh, the Health Education, Labor, and Pension Committee, or acronym HELP, in which health is a very important ingredient of that, and he's working very hard there to help develop uh, legislation out of that committee. Our goal, obviously, is to get a bipartisan proposal uh, through uh, and uh, have one that can uh, uh, generate a lot of votes because uh, we often talk about one word, health, or three words, health care reform. Uh, but I'd like to have uh, the people of the United States uh, think in terms of health care reform. Is health care reform as an issue? But it involves an issue that seldom uh, in one bill that Congress uh, uh, deals with affecting every citizen in the United States. Uh, and health care reform is one of those issues that very seldom comes along with one piece of legislation affecting everybody. Uh, other laws may be applicable to everybody, but not one law affecting the life of everybody. And another way to look at it is health care reform uh, is an issue because health care involves 16% of our gross national product. So in a sense, we're trying to restructure in some way, uh, and hopefully a good way, uh, restructuring 16% of the gross national product. Think of that being done in one bill in the Congress of the United States. If you don't have much faith in the Congress, it scares the devil out of you. If you've got uh, faith in the Congress, uh, that, or you recognize that things are wrong with the delivery of health care, then I think you realize that even though it affects 16% of the gross national product, something needs to be done. What we're trying to seek uh, is health insurance for everybody and at an affordable level. We're trying to put emphasis upon uh, dealing with uh, five or six uh, chronic diseases uh, that uh, are the result in 80% of all the health care costs being spent on those diseases. So we're looking at ways to better manage those diseases uh, in a way so that uh, uh, there's a quality of life uh, and uh, the issue of uh, of uh, expenses uh, is less in health care uh, without denying or delaying anything in regard to that health care delivery. We're trying to put emphasis upon preventive medicine because you know it's uh, easier to, and cheaper to keep people well than it is to uh, get them well after they're sick. And some of that involves incentivizing business people like you in this room through your health care Provide provisions uh, to give incentives. Uh, like, for instance, I've read about principal already doing over a long period of time. Or you can look at Safeway on a national basis uh, doing uh, the same thing with a great deal of success. And probably every one of you might do some of that. Uh, we, uh, we know that over the last 50 years, because the federal government's been involved in about uh, Forty-five percent of every dollar spent on health care, at least that's the percentage now, we've had some perverse incentives in health care delivery in America that has uh, uh, 
emphasize quantity. If you want to get paid, you do more. You see people more often. Uh, those perverse incentives kind of work like this. If you're a doctor, you tell your patient, I want to see you every day and twice on Sunday. These perverse incentives have uh, brought about a great deal of uh, 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 unfairness in the delivery of health care dollars in America where we in Iowa are fourth or fifth in quality and way low in reimbursement. Uh, and, and those perverse incentives need to be changed. So a goal of ours on the delivery aspect of our bill out of finance committee uh, is to uh, change from reimbursement based on quantity to reimbursement based on quality or you can say change from volume uh, to value, or you might call it pay for performance. But that's a major goal of ours. It ought to save a lot of money. The sad consequences is the Congressional Budget Office, uh, which is God around here, when they score something, uh, you, the reason they're God is because, you know, it takes 60 votes to override uh, any decision they make. We don't get the savings scored that all of us involved in this issue feel we're going to get because there's a lot of demonstration projects around the country that have proven uh, that you can deliver a higher quality of medicine and save a lot of money. Uh, and we need to start changing those perverse incentives and that's one of the major goals. And uh, there's a lot of issues that are controversial, but I can tell you that uh, if you would take 20 subsets of the issue of health care reform, uh, 15 of those, or you can take 25, pick any number you want, but the overwhelming number of those are basically, uh, you, you can say they're bipartisan or you can say they're nonpartisan, because both committees have studied these to great extent over a long period of time that we know we ought to go in those directions uh, and uh, consensus to do it. But there are three or four things that are very controversial holding things up. I hope we can get them worked out. There's a sincere effort on uh, Democrats and Republicans to do that. And I've come to the conclusion if we could write off 10 people of my party on the right, uh, 10 people on the Democratic Party of the left, we can get 80 people of the United States Senate behind health care reform. Uh, and uh, there's some people that think it ought to, can only be done one way, run by the government. There's other people that think the status quo is okay, and I don't agree with any of those extremes, and I think we've got the ability to get a large number of us together and get this job done. And if we don't get it done this year, it's not going to be done for four years, and let me tell you my reason for that. This is a non-election year, a new president. Uh, I spent an hour with President Obama yesterday. Uh, he is not a demanding person. Uh, he wants to get it done yesterday, and that's about the only thing that's inflexible about President Obama. Uh, uh, but on the issues that are key, he is willing to look at compromises. Uh, but uh, there's some people that are ideological, and I'm ideological sometimes, too. Uh, so I, I'm guilty of that as well. But we can get this job done in a bipartisan way, and the reason this year is next year is an election year, the next year after that is the start of a presidential uh, re-election and election, and so, you know, nothing gets done if it gets highly partisan. And if we can just get senators' attention on health care reform, I can tell you, yesterday, an hour with the president, I was supposed to spend an hour uh, at noon, but we had a vote and couldn't do it with another group of seven senators, tried to work out some compromises. I spent an hour and a half with just Republicans on the Senate Finance Committee, and nobody's talking to anybody else. I spent uh, another hour in Republican caucus, we call it a task force, anybody interested in health care reform. But there isn't enough focus, except for those of us on the committees working on it, uh, and it, it just seems like impossible to get the attention to it. When you get people looking at the details of it, you actually get things done. And so it's kind of a, not a very good environment, but it's something we are going to get the job done, I feel. Thank you very much.